for inviting uh, me to be here on, on behalf of the Abraj group. Uh, to give you a little bit of context, uh, which informs our views on the opportunities uh, today and our strategy, of course, um, members of our team have been on the ground investing in private equity in sub-Saharan Africa for two decades. Part of our team uh, was with the CDC group, which was the British government um, uh, investment development agency, and <clears throat> they spun out about a decade ago. And so Abraj, as an independent, uh, as an independent uh, private equity firm, has been investing uh, over a decade. So we've got two funds that we've already invested. We've invested about a half a billion dollars across just sub-Saharan Africa, uh, two billion if you include North Africa as well. So. Um, we're pioneers in the industry, and uh, during this time, we've truly the the during over the past two decades, people on our team have done over a hundred exits from private equity deals in a, in in a sub-Saharan Africa. So, um, you know, as a for over the last decade, we've made fifty-four investments uh, across nine sectors in twelve countries. And I say this not to sort of try to show off because, but, but rather because our deep and lengthy experience in these markets has taught us, we think, what works and what doesn't work. Uh, and uh, hopefully, you know, informs not, our, not only our current outlook, but also has um, helped to uh, raise interest among others. And we welcome the global alternative asset managers like the Carlyle Group coming in and giving Africa the, the attention uh, that it needs. But so three, three lessons that uh, we have learned that very much inform our approach, and they are these, and I'll talk a little bit more about each of them, but one, be local everywhere. I'll just say, not just be local, be local everywhere across the continent. Two, have global standard resources, a global platform standard resources that apply global best practices locally and comparative experience. So you can draw from not just tens, but hundreds of other investment experiences you've had in other growth markets which have similar attributes or similar companies to those in the Africa space. And the third is uh, in Sub-Saharan Africa to focus on mid-market deals. So on the first one, the be local everywhere, you know, I don't need to tell all, all you this, but obviously it's a region of you know 48, sub-Saharan Africa along 48 countries, 800 million people. Multi, there, it's not just one market. Uh, you can't invest from London, nor can you invest just from East Africa into West Africa. And in fact, maybe in West Africa, you need more than one office as well because they're in multiple cultures uh, and ecosystems in West Africa. So, so, uh, so we have four offices. We have with you know significant offices with uh, with uh, Nairobi, uh, Ghana, uh, Lagos, and Johannesburg, and that's how we cover. Plus, we have North Africa, but I'm not discussing North Africa uh, today. The second um, reason why you need to be local everywhere is so that you're uh, proximate to both the opportunities and the risks. To Ed's point. Um, it is all about sort of pricing and mitigating the risks, and one of those risks, obviously, is who are you doing business with, and the people best placed to know who you're doing business with are people who are locals, very locals on the ground. So we have 22 investment uh, professionals, you know, combined, they speak, there are uh, eight nationalities, 15 languages, you know, 20 years of experience investing in these markets. And then the third reason why we believe it's critical to be local is just the deep access and connectivity you get within, within these markets. This is, Africa is still a place where you can source proprietary deals or you can certainly have an advantage in non-proprietary deals if you are, if you are local. We, um, you know, tend to invest in uh, probably smaller ticket sizes generally than maybe what, what Ed, you suggested Carlisle might be looking at. We look for a more diversified portfolio uh, and probably a larger number of deals in, 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 a, in a given fund. So 
we don't see uh, actually a lot of competition for the deals that, that we look for. Um, the second lesson that we've learned is that uh, your returns uh, will be much better if you can have global standards uh, and resources that you can bring to bear on the regional uh, investment, with the regional investment teams and on the regional investments. So um, just to, to note three, three po points around this. One is that, you know, a uh, fast-moving consumer goods company in West Africa is going to have some similarities with a fast-moving consumer goods company in other parts of the globe, particularly in an emerging market, a growth market. And so to be able to bring insights around the opportunities and some of the quick wins and things that work as to expand those companies is very helpful uh, when you're evaluating the opportunity and you're looking at strategic buyers um, or IPOs as you exit. Uh, being regional, local, regional, and global also helps you uh, become the preferred partner uh, with the best firms who want to grow throughout the region. So a lot of the plays here in sub-Saharan Africa are around taking local companies across the continent or more broadly in their region and or helping them expand, expand to other uh, growth economies across the globe. And the third area is that, to Ed's point, that just because an economy is growing doesn't mean you're going to get returns out of the economy. That the, we invest in growth deals, but we invest alongside management and work with them to drive the growth agenda. And that's really absolutely critical. So it's not just the price you get in, it's what kind of growth are you going to get. And the kind of growth you're going to get is by backing solid management, but also bringing in people who have deep operational experience. We have a team we call the Abraj Performance Acceleration Group that comes out of industry, that works with us as part of the investment team, that works with the entrepreneurs to help them drive and grow the business. The final thing, and, and then I'll end, is um, the sweet spot of mid-market deals. Um, mid-market can be many different things. We look generally at kind of 10 to $100 million equity checks. But in our view, based on all the deals that we've seen and the deals that we haven't done and the deals that we've done, it is very helpful to be able to be um, uh, opportunistic with the financial resources to do uh, larger deals when they come uh, available. So this also then, do we, one of the questions I was asked is, you know, do you give co-invest to, to LPs? And the answer is yes, because if you can, if you can do larger deals, then you can take them on, take them on and then you can provide those, those co-investment opportunities to the LPs. So um, just a quick example, uh, I can't speak too much about it because it's not closed yet, but we announced um, uh, our intention to, to invest in um, the largest uh, fast-moving consumer goods company in uh, West Africa. It, it's, it's a very large deal, um, but that, uh, you know, being local, one of our uh, local team members actually had been on the board of the company and had seen it for 15 years. They knew us, we knew them. We knew that, that didn't give us sort of an inside track, it just helped us understand the value of the company, right? Then, because the, it was a complete eggs, it's a complete eggs that were buying 100% of the company, um, we were able to work with management to help them figure out how they're going to grow it after the, uh, the, the acquisition. And then third, it's a huge co-investment opportunity for our LPs because this is much bigger than we would want to do on average. Okay. Doing business in Africa. You can't afford to be without Africa Investor.